How to Live and Conquer Daily. Let's turn to 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. Holy Spirit, as you teach us, thank you for breaking it down, giving milk, bread, meat, and strong meat for all, Father God, who are in need and who will hear your, my voice in the future. Let your word be loud and clear this morning, O oh God. Give us understanding. Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your word, in the knowledge of you, in the knowledge of us, in the knowledge of Satan, the kingdom of darkness. Teach us, O oh God. Give us line upon line, precept upon precept, rightly dividing your word of truth in our hearts and our minds. Put the pieces together, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we will come out here, Father God, illuminated. Father God, so let your light shine brighter and more brighter, Father God, on us and in us and through us. Father God, for it's in your light that we have light. It is in you that we have understanding. So, Father God, we thank you for giving us more understanding, more revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 John 5, reading verse 4. 5, reading verse 4. Ready? Read. For who of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. One more time. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. How to live and conquer daily. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that, is Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of God. So this is the word of God saying to us. The ones who overcome the world. And overcome means that the ones who reign, the ones who keep Satan under their feet, the ones who have learned how to live in God, how to keep Satan under your feet, the ones who know their God, the one who know and believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who belongs to God. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The word of God says, he who is born of the spirit is spirit. And he who is born of flesh is flesh. Our first birth is flesh. Meaning that we all had to come here through our mother's womb. And so the first birth is flesh. He who is born of the Spirit is Spirit, meaning the ones who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as the Word of God says, is born again. So our second birth, or born again, is the, our spirit man being born again. And so what this is saying here is that for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And we know without faith we cannot please God. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So once you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you believe that God is the one that gave us Jesus his Son, and you are born again, then we are the one that overcome the world. The saints, in other words, the born again believers in Christ, are the ones that overcome the world. So if you're feeling defeated today, put a smile on your face. Know for sure that you have overcome the world in Christ because Christ is the one who actually overcame the world. We just overcame the world because we did all belong to him and he already won the victory for us. So we are overcome or we are overcome us because of Jesus Christ. And six says, and we can read six. Ready, read. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, 
because the spirit is true. So to overcome the world and to live in this world and to conquer it daily, we must be in Christ. We must believe that he is the son of God. We must believe that we have overcome Satan. The world that we overcome is Satan, the cares of this world, the troubles, the hardships, the tests we have already overcome. We've already gone through them and there'll always be tests that we have to go through because in God we go from level to level, glory to glory. So we have good news today knowing that we have overcome the world. We have overcome the world, but we do not overcome the world in flesh. We overcome the world in spirit. Believing and trusting and obeying God and his commandments. Living in God and having our existence and moving in God. So how to live and conquer daily? Let's now go to John 16. John 16. Read in verse 33, John 16, 33. Ready, read. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. One more time. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have come. Amen. So this is Jesus speaking, that he said that these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace so if you're looking for peace outside of christ it's not happening if you're looking for peace and you're being tormented to get rid of that torment to be from get rid of that tormentor the devil you must be in christ so a lot of people are being troubled and being tempted and going through tribulation and suffering hard times no peace of mind no rest because you're not in God. And the sad thing is we have a lot of Christians who suffer these falls, who suffer these things, I should say. If your peace is troubled, if you don't have peace, take it today. Because Christ died for that. He say, not the peace of this world I give you, I give you my peace. He said, I give you my peace. We have the peace of Jesus Christ. When Jesus walk in this earth, Jesus overcame Satan. Before he started his ministry, right after he was baptized by John the Baptist. He was taken into the wilderness. He went on a 40-day fast. After his 40-day fast, Satan came. Satan came to tempt Jesus, the Son of God. Three temptations. Three. If you be son of God. See, Satan will come to us and he say, oh, if you're a child of God, if he can tempt you to see if you really know who you are, or oh, you're not a child of God, can't be, because you use this and use that, you always fall in this, you always doing these things. He's going to try to tempt you. If he tempt Jesus, what do you think about us? He's going to try to tempt us. He's going to try to discourage us. He's going to try to shake us to our core so that we don't have that peace that Jesus gave, us, gave to us. He died and he said, this peace I leave with you, not as the world give it. So the peace that we supposed to have is that peace knowing that no matter what troubles come, no matter how deep the water go over our head, not, 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 don't care how hot the fire get, we should have that peace knowing that God have already brought us through it. Because, that, because we are in Christ. And great is he that's in us than that he that is in the world. So tests and tribulations will come. God told us that. They will come. But Jesus is saying to us that he give us a peace. 
that's not supposed to shake our foundation, that's not supposed to put fear on us, that have us scared, scared to live, scared to move, scared to take chances in God, scared to come out of the boat, come out the boat. Some of us are too comfortable. God didn't tell us come out the boat a long time. I could respect Peter who came out the boat. Some of us, we don't even want to put our finger in the water. There are times we have to get wet. There are times we have to go through the fire. To overcome and to conquer daily, we must know who we are. And in Christ, it says that we are an overcomer. In God, we are an overcomer. What is an overcomer? Those are the ones who overcome temptation. Those are the ones who overcome the devil. Those are the ones that stand up in Satan's face and say, Not today, devil. I see you. You will not bring the sickness on me. You will not cause the death. You, you will not steal from me today. You will not, in other words, cause my faith in God to be shaken. You will not cause me not to move and advance in life. You will not keep me a hostage. You will not keep me a slave to poverty, to lack. To sickness, to discouragement, not moving in, in promotions, not elevating in life. You will not. Why? Because you've already overcome them in Christ. So as a child of God, you are guaranteed victory. You are guaranteed a good life, an amazing, awesome life daily. 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 So if you wake up in the morning and the first thing your mind go on is something to put fear in you, to cause you to be downtrodden, to feel depressed, no, for sure, it didn't come from God. God do not bring fear to us, nor do we bring that spirit of depression. It's called a spirit of heaviness. When you start to feel discouraged, no, for sure, it didn't come from God. It is Satan now just throwing another arrow, another dart, another rock, uh, whatever. It is only Satan now trying to cause us to be shaken to our foundation to try to cause us to give up and stop trusting and believing in God stop trusting in Christ who have made us kings and priests we are kings and priests in the earth as long as we know who we are we have to know that we are kings and that we reign in the earth we have to know that we are priests and that we reign in the earth but if we don't know, then Satan will forever make us pop us and beg us, vagabonds in the earth. Always trying to give, get something from the devil. Why is it that we begging the devil for food? Why is it we begging the devil for a roof? We do it whenever we take our trust out of God. Because God has already supplied those things to us. And so they're free for us to take. But we must take them believing and we must take them with faith. And we must take them by trust. And we must take them in God. They don't come no other way. And if they come any other way, they come with precious pressure. Too much pressure to where we can't handle it. The way our minds are always trying to pay the bills. Trying to put food on the table. And so what are we trying to do? In our own flesh, we try to overcome the world. You cannot overcome the world in flesh. We are overcome because of who we are in Christ. Because Christ did it. And the only one who was able to overcome was Jesus Christ. And so we cannot overcome in flesh. We overcome because we are born again believers in Christ Jesus. And so we keep Satan on our feet because we are in Christ and we know that he put them there. So to overcome, we must be born again. To overcome, we must be born again. To live, we must know that we are overcomers. These things have, have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Might have it, meaning you must know that you have it. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So just how Jesus is encouraging us by saying, look here, test is going to come. Satan is going to bring... God is going to allow Satan to bring the test. He's going to allow Satan to bring the temptation. But he said, be of good cheer. A lot of us are not having that joy 
unspeakable and full of glory. We let our situation put a frown on our face, discouragement in our hearts, but we must know who God is. God is the supreme being. being. He is the almighty God. And he already know our end before our beginning, meaning that he know that we will overcome if we have faith, if we believe in him, and if we stand our ground against the enemy. And uh, the enemy happens to be Satan, whose name was Lucifer. God took back his name, Lucifer, after he rebelled and he fought against God, God's angels, I should say, not God. He fought against the angels of God, him and one third of the angels in heaven. They had a big fight, big battle. But of course, God's angels prevailed. God then kicked Satan out of heaven because he disobeyed. He wanted to be like God. In other words, the job that God gave him to do, which was music, he decided that wasn't good enough. He saw the glory that was, been, was given to God and he wanted to get that same praise that God was receiving. He said, I will be like the Most High. So he allowed pride to jump on him and he rebelled. Playing music and being in charge of music and being a great angel, God had him so arrayed, so beautiful. That wasn't sufficient for him. He wanted to be like God. God say, not today and not ever. <laughs> okay, Michael, go get him. And God kicked him out, why? He wanted to be like God, he rebelled. And let me tell you one thing about our God. If we rebel, God do the same thing. If we sin, God do the same thing. That's what happened to Jesus. That's why he had to die. He took on all of our sins. See, when Jesus walked the earth as a man, as a human being, he was perfect. He was without sin. Because he was the son of God. So by him being the son of God and not being, a son, not being the blood son of Joseph or any other male, caused him to come into the earth without sin. Every human being that from Adam and Eve were they conceived, Eve conceived I should say, all came with sin. So for Jesus to come here without sin, he had to have been the son of God. So by him becoming the, coming in flesh, being the son of God made him without sin. So for him to be able to take our place, he had to take all of our sins. So he became a murderer. He became a pedophile, a pedophilia. He became a thief. He became a liar. He became a drunkard because he said drunkards would not inherit the kingdom of God. He became a backbiter. He became a gossiper because he said he don't gossip. He became the accuser of the brethren because he said not to do it. Every sin known to man, Jesus took on. And because he became that sinner, Jesus, God said, I have to turn my back on you. If he had stayed pure and holy without sin, our sins on him, he would not have been able to redeem us. So to redeem us means that he had to take on all of our sins. Our past sins, our sins today, our sins forever as long as we live. So when he went to the cross, God said, now that you are a sinner, I have to turn my back on you. And so when he was on that cross, that's why he cried out. He cried out because there was a separation from him and God for the very first time. For the very first time, the son of God was separated from God. For us. So that we don't have to stay disconnected. So when he became our sin, he freed us. He said, okay, I'm going to take your punishment. Your punishment of death so that you don't have to die spiritually anymore. So when he did that, God turned his back. He was crucified. In other words, he died in our place. So that we do not have to allow Satan to continue to beat us silly. To continue to steal, to kill, to destroy. He is the thief. And that's all Satan can only do. That's the only thing he can do to us. 
flesh wise, steal, kill, and destroy. So when Jesus say to us here, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me, me, Jesus Christ, you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The reason why he said he have overcome the world is because he did. He overcame the world for us. Because why? We are in him. He said it's in him that we have peace. So we're looking for peace outside of God. It will not happen. We're looking not to have tribulations, not to have tests, not to go through. It's not going to happen. It's already been spoken. When he hung on the cross and he said it is finished, he spoke these words before he hung on the cross. So if he left his peace, pick up the peace, take the peace. And not allow the enemy to shake you. Because of tribulations, because of tests, because of trials, they will come. But God say, cheer up. Jesus say, cheer up. Cheer up. Sing him a praise. Sing him a love song. Serenade him. I say, God, I know you. And I know that you will not let me drown, not let me burn, him, not let me catch fire, not let me sink, not let me die. Because you have already overcome the world and I am in you. Therefore, I have overcome myself. See, you have to know who you are. As a son of God, you have to know who you are. How to live and conquer, be myself faith, must believe, must trust. Conquer is to overcome, to take control, be successful, and to climb. Those are some of what conquer means. So, Nothing there say fail. Nothing there say bottom. Nothing there say you don't climb. Nothing there say failure. Conquer means to take control. Overcome. So we need to take control of our lives. We need to take control of our emotions. We need to take control. And you take it by faith and the word of God, knowing the word of God. Because we need to stand on the word of God. And to stand on the word of God, we must know the word of God. So when Satan come, we give him the word of God, as Jesus did. When that temptation, when he came and Satan came and he said, if you be the son of God, make these bread or rocks, or change these rocks, make them bread. Turn these rocks into bread is what he said. Jesus knew who he was, so he wasn't trying to play no game with Satan. He didn't say, what you mean, if I'm the son of God, I am the son of God. See, we just have too much long conversation with Satan. <laughs> he didn't say, what you mean, I, I am the son of God, and you know I'm the son of God. And so I can turn this and prove to him. He didn't, he didn't have to prove nothing to Satan. He knew who he was. So he didn't entertain the devil. You know what he said? His comeback was, man shall not live by bread alone. He never once addressed what Satan said, if you be the son of God. Because why? He knew who he was. He knew he was the son of God. So if you know that you are the son of God, you too can do the same thing with God, what Jesus did to Satan. Shut him down with the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we have to know the word so that we know how to keep Satan on our feet. Satan only responds to the word of God. He responds to the word of God when we speak the word of God, knowing that when we speak the word of God, that the power in us will put him to flight. Satan only responds to the word of God, not our words. So there's no use going in a conversation or getting in a conversation back and forth with the devil with your own words. He's going to set you up like he set up Eve. When we have that conversation in our mind, you're not having a conversation with yourself. The conversation that goes on in your mind is not with you. The conversation that goes on in your mind most of the time is either with God or with Satan. Why? Your soul is your mind, your will, your intellect. So Satan is going to come and he's going to bring thoughts. And he's going to make it sound like it's coming from you. So it's on you and for me to know who talking. 
Because God come the same way. In your mind. But God ain't come with no foolishness. He ain't coming with no dirty thoughts. He ain't coming with no fearful thoughts. He is coming with power, love, and a sound mind. That's what he's coming with. Satan, on the other hand, he's coming with fear. He's coming with failure. He's coming with nasty, dirty thoughts. Shut him out. Because it is not you. And he's coming with that, what you've been falling to for many years. He's going to keep bringing that until you say, enough is enough. No more. I refuse to think on those thoughts again. It's on us to shut the devil down. Because this is how we're supposed to conquer. We're supposed to live in peace. So that when Satan come, fair don't cause us to jump out the boat. Or jump out of the frying pan. Love's supposed to keep us stable. Love's supposed to keep us unshakable. Because why? God is love. So love's supposed to have us grounded and rooted, rooted every day, knowing who we are. So that when fear comes, because Satan going to bring fear, we recognize where it comes from. We recognize who sent it. And we know what to do to cast it down. So to live and to conquer daily, we must be in Christ. We must know the word. We must know how to get to move the hand of God. And the word of God says, it's impossible to please God without faith. So we need faith, and even if it's just the size of a grain of mustard seed, then that's enough faith to move a mountain. And there's no, there's no high mountain that I know about in this Bahamas. I've seen mountains to where you cannot see the top of the mountain because it's covered by the clouds. Those are mountains. So if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to that mountain, you could say to a mountain where you cannot see the top because it's covered in the cloud. It cast into the sea and have to go. Because you know that the power that is in you, when you speak, the power in you shut down the power outside of you. Because it is greater, it is stronger. Because God indwell us. God indwell or the Holy Spirit, which is that fire and power that we need, is the one who's speaking through us. This is the reason why we only speak the word of God. Because the word of God has already been spoken, so it cannot fail. The word of God cannot go to God on our behalf and fail. Because he said his word will not return to us to him void. But when we get emotional, and we start to look at our world seems to be crumbling. You go to the food store, and what you could have gotten with $100, it take you like $200 to get half of what you used to get for $100. Remember when I used to shop years ago? Going to Walmart, everybody who know about Walmart could attest to this. One trolley, and $200, you have that trolley full, and underneath the trolley, and in your hand. Yes. <laughs> now, $200 in Walmart, and I always say Walmart because I really don't shop home. You go and you get the smaller grocery bags. The little smaller one, which you can put uh, when you go to the restaurant, the smaller ones for the handle, there, mm -hmm. you could spend $200 and we carry out four of them and they're full. Mm -hmm. So when we start to look at our situation, and fair come, go to the word and let the word, word of God now bring you over. It says, Jesus said that he have already come the word. He said, be of good cheer. And just so Jesus could hold up the two loaves, the five loaves and two fishes, and supernaturally it multiplied, go to the food store, but before you get there and spend the money, say, Father God, I thank you for stretching this money. I thank you to be able to get everything I need. And if you pray that prayer, go to the food store. But don't go to the food store without that prayer. Let me get everything I need. I trust you, me. You can come out there with change. You can say, well, Lord, how does this happen? What ain't going to be on special? They're going to have the wrong price on it. <laughs> Been to the food store. Yeah. I, I kid you not. And because they have the price on it, they have the honor to, you know, I'm stealing. Yes. 
went to the food store to get me some eggs and I preferred a, a organic pastured eggs. It had $12 on it. This is it's only 12 eggs, people. $12 I most believe on it, which is the regular price, or $12.99. And I know the brand, and I know what I buy. And so when I went, I pick it up, it had, I want to say $3.99 or $2.99. I say, hold on now. This, this must be expired. So I look hard the day, the date was an expire. I say, but this is the brand I get. I say, hold on, hold on. Ah, uh -uh, let me go. Got my eggs. I wanted one, right? But I was going to get five because I knew that in the price. <laughs> but you know, for, to me, that would have been stealing because I knew he went to get one. And I know it was a misprice. It wasn't expired. And I know that was 12. And I said, I was going to put some more. I said, like, uh uh, no, we ain't doing that. Just get you one and let's go. Got the one, got to the cashier. Shanae looking at it, say, Mommy, your egg, your egg is twelve ninety nine. <laughs> I said, No, that ain't that's what that is. So I said, That's a two I think it was three ninety nine. I said, That's three ninety nine or two ninety nine. She said, No, it's I said, No, I said that. So she, she left. Going straight to the back, took about five or so minutes to come back, come back with a fellow who was putting the price on it. He said, Excuse me, ma'am, um, um, we made a mistake. I said, get your supervisor. <laughs> I have no I have no discussion with you. Get your supervisor. So it was nice and respectfully turned around. The cash the supervisor came, she went to the cashier, to the to the bond. Never open her mouth because you know. You got to know the law. Go and operate on laws. I got my egg and I take that and I say, thank you, Jesus. But my conscience pricked me. The fella going back and I know he already started changing the prices. So before you go to the food store and you know in your heart you do not have sufficient to get what you need, you pray over that money. See, I'm a giver and he said he going to help. He said he will repay. He said he will feed me. He will bless me and take care of me if I do his and keep his commandments. I am a doer and keeper of his commandments. So when doors open, I learned to walk through them. I got my eggs and I was happy with my eggs. He will make a price change for you. Yes, yes. I've seen him done it over and over. When I go away, before I go away, I fast. And I, I go before God and say, Father God, take me where the sales are. I want 50% of 60% of 80% of it. When I go back, they're taking that 10 off. They got the stuff overpriced anyway. <laughs> so whenever I go away, I am ready prepared for my trip. Yes. I am prepared looking for, for blessings, looking for sales, and looking for my money to stretch. And so no matter where I go, if they have no sale, when I pick it up, sale there. Went to one of the stores I love to shop to, when I went, I see a sale sign so nowhere. Shortly after COVID, so everything was tight, tight, tight. I said, okay, I'm shopping today because I see nothing say sale for me. When come back the second day, mm-mm, ain't here the third day, said, time winding down, God, I see no sale yet. Third day, I went in there, let me tell you something, I saw for sale, I said, thank you, Jesus. I pulled this color, look here, it was so pretty, I was getting me every color, God said, don't run out now. <laughs> so I sent the three colors of the same blouse. Go to another one, get another three colors of the same. But I look here and I pull out and I pull and I went to the cash register. And I see the price. Looking at her, I say, excuse me, ma'am. I said, they're on sale. So she said, no, these ain't on sale. These were brand new items. I said, yeah. She said, no, but they're on sale. I said, you want me to show you where they are? <laughs> so she said, okay. So she called the supervisor or somebody. And so I say, they right over there. Let me show you. And they, you think they can? They can? And they had an error. Wasn't supposed to be on sale. <laughs> Pray before you go. Pray before you go. There was either 30 or 40% of, I don't remember the amount, but at most 30% or 40% of the luck here. It wasn't on sale. I think there was new arrivals. They were supposed to put new arrivals and they put for sale. Look, so they mix it up, but they mix it up. God, right now, answer in your prayers. But you have to pray. 
you have to pray. The wealth of the wicked is thought up for the righteous. So when the devil try to steal, you say, not today. You will not steal from me and God stretch my money. And went to another one. I don't know if it's the same trip. Might have been a different trip. Went inside there. And we saw, this time it was Sinead time. She saw some cami, cami, what you call them? Little small, little singlets and stuff over in their clothes. Cami, so right. Uh, they had them for a dollar fifty from five or six or eight. It was eight dollars. I think they was down to two something. Man, and we looking, looking, trying to get all the right sizes and colors. But uh, when we get there, we found some. The woman cashing up. I said, but daddy in the right price. She said, they put the wrong sale. They put them on the wrong sale. What, she said, where you got them from? I said, right there to the bottom. She said, oh, yeah, they put the wrong sale. So they put them on the wrong shelf or something like that. So she called the manager. said, yes, they, they mix it up. Change it, change it, change it. The woman going and pull everything down. <laughs> Why? They put them on the wrong shelf that had 50% off. Go before God before you spend your money. Go before God before you come out of your home. Go before God and pray and fast and make it a daily habit that you go before God before you move in flesh. Because God know where the sales are. He know how to bring it to you. He know how to allow his angels to go to work for you. And for me, but if we keep complaining, if we keep murmuring, you know, that's not how you live and conquer daily. To live and conquer daily, you must be trusting in God, believing in God, praying, having faith and belief in God. When we look at David, let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 30, King David. He was... Just as King David we're talking about. David was returning from a battle, him and his men. They went and raided, I believe it was the Philistines, or Philistines, however you want to pronounce it, 1 Samuel 30. And they were coming back home. And when they got home, their place where they lived was raided by an enemy. And the enemy took all of the men's wives and their children. And they burned their homes. They burned down their homes. And when they burned down the homes, David men and David, when they reached home, they started to they weep. They cried because all of their children and all of their wives were taken captives by their enemies. And David men wanted to stone him because they blamed him for their wives and children being taken. And so this is what David did. David went before God. Actually, let's just read it. Um, 30, let's read. It's a short read, so let's read verse 1 through 8. 1 Samuel 30, verses 1 through 8. Ready, read? And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives and were they slew not any, neither great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up his voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. And when you, and says, right. And Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. 
And David said to Abatha, the priest, Abelic's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Amen. So they wanted to kill David. They wanted to stone him to death because they, their wives and their children were all taken captive. But it says that none, they didn't kill any, so they just took them. And so now David now, David encouraged himself. A lot of time when we don't cry, we need to encourage ourselves. We have to stand our ground. Let the tears come, but don't let the tears, the tears stay. Encourage yourself in the Lord. It says David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. So when tests and trials and tribulations come, because they will come, know the word of God. Know how to get into the presence of God. So that you can say, God, I, I don't like how I feel. I don't like what I see. But Lord, I'm going to stay in your word. Because you say all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. You said, I must stand and you will fight my battles for me. So you have to get the word to keep you encouraged. This is how we defeat the enemy, Satan. This is how we keep ourselves in God by giving God back his word. And most of all, believing his, believing his word. David encouraged himself in God because he had experiences with God. God delivered him as a teenager from a bear and a lion. And as a teenager from Goliath, a giant. A giant. So he know his God. He had experiences with God. So he know that God didn't leave him or let him down in the past. So what he did, he encouraged himself in God and say, God, I know you've always been with me. You never let me down. You delivered me from a bear. You delivered me from a lion. You even killed Goliath. So God, even now, I know, what do you have me to do? So he encouraged himself, one, then he prayed, two, he asked God, what shall I do? Shall I pursue them? Should I attack them? Should I go after them? And when he then gone and he inquired of the Lord, God answered him. See, a lot of us, if we go to God, we don't want to wait for the answer. It's taking too long. But let's look at what David did. 8 says, And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, This is God answering David, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail over recover all. So he now, by him spending time with God, because he believed him, he waited for God to answer. He didn't just get up with his men and say, let's go get our things, let's go get our wives and our children. No, he sat down, so what he did? He rested in that peace, knowing that, look here, God will tell me what to do. God will show me what to do. God is going to tell me. So he encouraged himself first. Then he prayed, asking God, what shall I do? See, a lot of us, we don't want to go to God and say, God, what shall I do? We want to go and tackle the situation by ourselves. And then when it get too big for us, oh, God, help me. <laughs> you didn't mess it up. So before you mess it up, you go to God and say, God, what shall I do? Shall I pursue? And God answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and recover all. So when we come to God, we come to God one expecting him to answer us. But when he answer us, we must do what he tell us to do. Sometimes when God answers us, we don't, want, we don't like the answer. So what we do, we shut down that answer because it's too hard or we feel it came from the devil because we don't want to do what he say to do. But there's no use going to God, asking him what to do. When he gave the instructions, we allow fail or situation to stop us from doing what he tell us to do. Sometimes you have to make them tough decisions. The tough decision will save us. So David encouraged himself and they ended up going after the men that invaded their home, Ziglag, and they recovered all of their wives, all of their children. Everything that was stolen, taken captive, they got everything back. 
So when we do what God say to do, then we get to see the same results that David saw. We get to see the same results with Jesus God when he, was, when he walked on, the, on this earth. He shut down Satan by the words of God that came out of the Bible, out of the word of God. So for Jesus to have had the word, all them times when he was a young man, a young teenager from the age of 12, he was in the temple learning, learning about God at the age of 12. He was in the temple learning about this God who we know was his father. So we have the Holy Bible. This is how we learn about our God, our Savior, by opening up and spending time. If we do not do it, then we are doing ourselves a disservice. And how can we overcome if we don't have the word? That's how we overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. We overcome because of Jesus Christ who already come, who overcame for us. So we have to do what they did. When we look at Joseph, let's go to Genesis chapter 39. We go to Joseph, the life of Joseph. Joseph was a love child of Jacob and Rachel. He was a son in Jacob's old age. He was the 11th son of Jacob. So Jacob was well in age when he had Joseph. And he really loved him because the, his mother, Joseph's mother, was the love of Jacob's life. That was the first woman he saw and he loved her. And he worked seven long years. In fact, he worked 14 years for her. He was supposed to work seven years for Rachel. Rachel, right, isn't it? Yeah. Rachel. And at the end of seven years, he said that seven years didn't even, must be only feel like a day or so to him. It went by so quickly because he loved her. Deep love for Rachel. And of course he was deceived, God the sister. And he had to work another seven years for her. And everyone, all his, his wife and the other two servants that were given to him to bear children, they all had wives for him except for the love of his life. And when Joseph came, he loved him. So he would send Joseph out to find out what the other 10 older brothers were doing. And Joseph always came and brought, brought back a, a, the right report. So the other 10 brothers, they, they couldn't stand Joseph. They called him a telltale because they would, he would always go and tell their daddy where they were and what they were doing and chance most of the time they probably weren't where they supposed to be or doing what they supposed to do so they hated him they hated him so much that one day they decided they were going to kill joseph but there was reuben who, who decided look him out we can't kill him he's our flesh and blood so he made a plan for them to drop him in this in this well or this pit that didn't have any water and his plan was to come back and take joseph out later but what happened the other ones pull him out and sold him into slavery. By Joseph being sold into slavery at such a young age, he was able to rise up in Egypt, second in command, at a very young age. Why? He knew God. His daddy told him about the God that he served. So he had a relationship with God. So when he was sold to Potiphar, he found grace and favor. We in 939, we can read three and four. 39, three and four, ready read? And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he, he served him. Amen. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had put into his hand. Amen. So now, this is a slave now. Joseph is now a slave. He was sold to Potiphar. Potiphar saw that God was with Joseph. So for him to have seen that God Almighty was with Joseph... Joseph had to have something on him. For him to have found grace 
in his sight. And most of all, he had mercy. He made him ruler or lord or overseer over everything in his house. Potiphar didn't know what was in his own home. He trusted Joseph. Everything Joseph had access to except for Potiphar's wife. And the devil jumped on Potiphar's wife. She saw this young, handsome, nice looking young man. And she decided to let the devil jump on her to use her to try to now take down Joseph. Joseph's comeback was not fair. Not fair. He was a slave and he was treated very well. But he didn't allow fair now to jump on him to do what this woman wanted him to do. So what did he do? He took the high road. He said, no, I will not do such a wicked thing in front of my God. I will not do such a wicked thing. He loved God so much that he chose not to do what Potiphar's wife wanted him to do. And she wanted him to leave with her. With, with her. And he said no. He loved his master, but most of all he loved God. And six says, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he had, save the bread, what he did eat. This is, this is Potiphar. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Nine says, there is none greater in this house than I. Neither had he kept back anything from my hand. This is Joseph now speaking to Potiphar's wife. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great and wickedness in the, and sin against God? So what Potiphar's wife is trying to do to Joseph, Joseph said, no, I'm not going to do that. It is, a, it is a great evil to my master. It's a great sin before my God. So Joseph decided he's going to stay faithful and committed to God. And for him, refusing her, she lied on him. Say he did this to her and he never touched her. And of course her husband believed and he had him thrown in prison. Again, this is a wise prison now because he was in a master's house where he had access to everything. Now he's in a prison. So he's going deeper, but yet he didn't give up on God. He continued to serve God. So no matter what come your way, serve God. If the devil come and he take the house, serve God. If the devil come and he take the job, serve God. Serve God. Trust God. Believe that he can get you out. He was thrown into jail now. And so 21 says, but the Lord was with Joseph and show him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And then 23 says, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with Joseph, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. So if you want to prosper in your business, you want to prosper in life, in your marriage, in your home with your children, give it to God. Release it all to God so that it may prosper. It said he prospered. How could you prosper in a jail? Yes. How could you prosper in jail? But it says God made Joseph to prosper. Now, what jail is give the prisoner charge over another prisoner or prisoners? This prison gave pres the prisoner Joseph, put him in charge of the prisoners. So that now the keeper of the jail, he had nothing to worry about. Why? Joseph, he found grace and favor. No matter where you go in life, grace, favor, mercy will follow you. No matter where you go. We saw grace, we saw favor, we saw mercies. They came from God. In bad, what should have been bad situations, God still turned it around for Joseph where Joseph was in charge of the prison. That means he wasn't eating the prison bread and water. He was in charge in the prison. He was in charge as a slave in the prison, in the master's house. So no matter where you go, we have overcome. Remember that. You have overcome. God did it for all of these men and women in the Bible. These are real stories. These are testimonies. These are their life biography. It's part of it. He'll do the same for us. Regardless of what it is. And so now, the day come. Joseph was tired now. 
he then interpreted two dreams. One was for the, um, the king or the pharaoh's uh, cup bearer and the baker. Uh, unfortunately, it was the baker, when his dream was interpreted, it interpreted that he's going to die in three days. And the cup bearer, his dream that was interpreted, was interpreted that he's going to go back into uh, part of his house and serve him, and both was in three days. And in three days, just what the dreams was, um, Joseph inter interpreted their dreams came to pass. One was beheaded, and the other one was put back in his position. And the one that was put back, the cupbearer, the one was put back in his position, Joseph said, look here, this is my story. I'm not supposed to be here. I was sold into prison. I was sold into slavery. So he gave him his life story as to how he got there. In other words, I'm not I'm supposed to be in prison. I'm not supposed to be here. Go and tell my case to, the, to, to Pharaoh so that I could be released. Well, yes, some years went by. Pharaoh now had a dream that no one could interpret, of course. This is now God's plan to rescue Joseph out of prison. Pharaoh had a dream. No one could interpret it. God's plan again. Know that God knows the plan he has for you. Plan that is for good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. We have to believe that. So go through your tests to get you to where God have you to be. So he went to his test. Now he's getting tidy, ready to come out. God made a plan, intervention, to get him out. So the cupbearer said, look, I forgot about this young man who was in prison. He interpreted my dream and the other, uh, the baker's dream, and just what he said happened came to pass. I was put back in place. The other one was beheaded. Pharaoh now sent for Joseph, clean him up, come before him, say, look, this is my dream, and I need you to interpret it. God, I noticed Joseph never gave, Joseph always gave all glory to God. Let's now go to Genesis 41, reading 15. And 16. Ready, read? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard saying of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer. Amen. So he is giving glory to God. He said, but I can't interpret it, but you, but God can. And so by him giving God glory, God now gave him the interpretation of the dreams with the corn and the cows, the lean and the fat, and he told him what to do. After interpret the dream, Joseph now go ahead and say, look, you need to put somebody in charge of when you have these seven years of plenty to put up so that you don't starve when the seven years of not enough come. All of that was done. Joseph happens to have been that man. Pharaoh said, well, ain't nobody wiser than you. Nobody here wiser than you, so therefore I'm going to make you second in charge. I will be the only one above you. Not only did he uh, elevate it in to right underneath him, put a ring on his finger. People start to bow to Joseph, a slave. In Egypt, now become the second in charge. In Egypt, who enslaved him. And on top of that, Pharaoh gave him a wife. So you think God can't give you yours? You think God can't give you what you're looking for? And he can do it overnight? He did that overnight for Joseph. Joseph went through the test. So we have to go through ours. And let's do all that God tells us to do. We have to have that relationship. When it got hot for Joseph, Joseph still told the truth. He took the high road. He did not bow to Satan. He did not stop trusting in God. He kept his head up. He gave excellent service in Potiphar's house. He gave excellent service in prison. That's why he became the head. God have made us the head and no longer the tail, above and not beneath. We have to know that and believe that. And so God, these men kept God's laws. They loved God. And they knew what sin was and they wasn't trying to do sin. So when we do what God instructs us to do, we should have that same prosperous, good, abundant life. Same thing happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's go to Daniel 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, along with Daniel, they were prisoners. They were taken captive. They were taken captive. They were taken out of their land because of sin. And so God now um, put the children of Israel back into sin. Since they 
were taken captives. They loved God, they served God. And because they serve God, of course, Satan will always will try to show us that. So don't, don't ever take it strange when Satan bringing them, when God allows Satan to bring temptation. This is the time the word of God say, count it all joy. And when you're being, when temptation comes, you say, count it all joy in divers temptation. For it is chance, it, it ain't for bad. It is not meant for bad. So here it is now. The three... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was getting ready um, to be sent, uh, thrown into the fire because they refused to stop serving God. Um, Nebuchadnezzar had a problem with that. We're in Daniel 3. Daniel 3, we will read. Let's read 14 so we get an understanding of it. Because, see, they refused to worship any other god than God. They wanted them to serve a golden image. And they refused to worship a golden image. They said no. And they saying this to the king who cut their head off. See, they didn't have no fear. They feared God more than they feared man. They feared God more than they feared man. With us, as Christians, we fear the devil too much. We are afraid what the boss gonna say if we say, "Look, yeah, I want a sun, I want Sunday off." We are afraid to go to God, the boss, and say, "Look, yeah, my salary is too small." We are afraid to go and ask for a raise. We are afraid to go when we know the work we do we're not being compensated correctly. We are afraid to step out and go into that business and go deep into our own business. We are afraid to just to trust God with our lives, our children. We are too fearful. Back in these days, these thousands of years ago. They kill you quick. Why? They, they, were, they were kings or, or pharaohs, and they call the shots. We are too fearful. As saints of God, we are soldiers, and we are mighty warriors, but we become mighty warriors the more we spend time with God and knowing who he is and who we are. So they, were, they refuse to worship this golden image. So... Let's just read it so we understand. Let's go from 14 to 18. Ready, read? Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the coin, ha, sacro, Psalms and do some more, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the midst of a fire furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thine gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they was willing to die. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was willing to die before they go and worship these idols. They know the God that they serve was the real God, the one and true living real God. And every other gods with a small g are just man-made idols. And it said it was a golden image. So he got angry with them. Nebuchadnezzar said, okay, let's see what God can get you out of this fire today. He took them, bound them, and threw them into the... Before he threw them off, he was so angry. He said, turn up the heat in that fire seven times hotter. Make it seven times hotter. I want to hear them fry it. Then they bound them. Then they throw them in. Look here. The biggest fellas they could find, they say, look here, throw them in. The sad thing was, they got so close to the edge, the fellas who were throwing them in burned up. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going down in that fiery furnace, praising and worshiping their God. That's what I say. They had to. Because they didn't fear what the king was going to do. They said, we will not serve your God. In other words, we're willing to die for our God because he is the real deal. He is the real deal. And if he can't deliver us, he said, but so will it be. What we got to lose, we're going home to be, we going home to be with him. So you have to know you'll be ready to die. And stop just sinking. Some just throw their hand up and say, okay, okay Satan, come take me. No kind of fight. At least try, put your hand up and throw at least one blow. <laughs> try get one good blow and say, look, I might beat you, but I can get one blow off of you. Go around with the smiling to know that you hit him out. Try knock him out. When you see me come in prayer, I come, I come with a spirit of anger and say, God, give me, please, give me the prayers to pray to cut him down. Amen. You got to get, you got to become a warrior when it comes to Satan because he already know how to fight. We have to learn how to do it correctly and how to fight. And we don't fight people. We go wrong when we fight people. We want to row and cuss them. We want to hate them. God forbid if you prepare their food, you want to spit in the food. Spit in the water. It ain't right. They're not your problem. Find out what demon is behind them trying to get to you. Because it is a spirit. So now, they in the furnace, they are ready in the furnace. The three of them. So the king sitting on his throne and he knocked. And he couldn't believe what he was seeing. He looked, he said, hold on, hold on. How much of them be throwing that fire? Say, King, we only, it's only three? We throw three. And he said, well, why is he four in the fire? And they walking around. In fact, they wasn't even bound no more. Oh, was four in there. And he said, the fourth one looked like the son of God. So when he taught he was serving a God, he saw the real God that day. Yes. He saw the real son of God that day. Who came to do what? To deliver his servants because they say, the God whom we serve. The God whom we serve. So we have to learn how to serve our God. We have to learn how to serve. When he say give and do and go and say, go and do. What he say do? Say what he say. Go and serve God. He couldn't believe it. He tell them, look here, man. Go get them out of the fire. He had respect after that for the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He had respect. High respect. High respect for them. We gonna read, I gonna read it. 28 says, Not then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word calling himself now and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god and now 29 the bottom said because there is no other god that can deliver after this order so now this is evidence to him that the god who Shadrach, Meshach, and the Abednego serve is the real deal. The God that they serve is the God that we call Father. Yeah. Let's read 29 together. That's an awesome chapter. Ready? Read. Yeah. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Now, he's the king. He was so amazed. He was so fair full of the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he now made a decree. And when a king make a decree, you can't change it. 
that decree was if you speak against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, again, the bed, then the goat, you're going to be cut in pieces, you're going to lose your house, and your house will be made a dunghill. Everybody know the dung is? That's feces hill. That's how strong an effect they left on this king. That he threw a tree in and four was there. We live and conquer daily in Christ. We can do the same thing, but we have to believe, we have to serve, we have to obey, we have to trust, and we must know our God so that we can now do the same thing that they do. Cannot expect to live and conquer it daily in God if we don't know how to conquer and how to live. We must know. And everything that Christ did on this earth, and he tell us to go and do, we can do. All he did was good on this earth. That's all he did. And so we are commanded to do the same, which is to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So we must learn how to, one, love ourselves, and two, love our neighbor as ourselves. That means you don't put nobody before, before God. You don't put nobody before you. And a lot of parents put their children before them. And you got some parents, children out there, that put their parents on a pedestal. Those are gods that you're putting up. They become gods. Some of us, same thing with things. The car, so you people can't drive in the car. Let alone picking up somebody off the side of the road. You can't worship things. In order for us to live and conquer daily, we must do what Jesus tells us to do. We must obey the commandments of God. Last one, let's go to um, Acts 10. This is Cornelius. Acts 10. Cornelius was a commander in the Romans army. So he was not a Jew. He was not one of the children of God. He didn't come from out of um, the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, he was a Gentile. He was a stranger. He was, a, he was not a, a child of God in terms of blood. So Cornelius says then he was a centurion, meaning that he was a commander in the army. He was, two says he was a devout man. That's Acts 10 too. And one that fed God with all his heart, with his with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now this is a man who was a Gentile. But he fed God. He gave, it said he gave much alms. In other words, people that were in need, he assisted. And he said he prayed to God always. Now at that time, Jesus had already died. The Holy Spirit already came and empowered the disciples who are now apostles. And so his sacrifice and his, his arms giving please God. Let's read four together. Ready to read? And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thine prayers and thine arms... Amen. So this is now God giving him a vision because he pleased God so much by him doing alms and by him praying to God always that it says his alms and his prayers came up to God as a memorial before God. In other words, God remembered Cornelius and he saw the fear and the love that he had for God that now he, will, he wanted to answer a prayer of Cornelius and he wanted to do something great for Cornelius because it touched God's heart what he was doing. This man was not a Jew, but he loved and fed God and he prayed to God all the time. And he gave, he gave alms. That means he gave the people that were in need, the orphans, the widows, the, the less fortunate. So he gave and it so pleased God that he now visited him send an angel and tell him exactly what's going to happen. Go send these men to go and find Peter. Long story short, 
He told Peter, I want you to go to Cornelius. Peter said, not so. But when God told him why, he went. And Peter, out of obedience, wasn't supposed to enter a Gentile's house, but out of obedience to God, he went. And by the sacrifice of Cornelius, the love that he had for God and obeying the Lord, well, so far he, could, he obeyed God by giving alms and praying always. God now allowed the Holy Spirit, allowed Cornelius to receive the Holy Spirit on his whole house. So they all were baptized and they received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God opened up Jesus to the Gentiles. And that is amazing. When our sacrifice please God, when our praise and our prayers and our worship and our obedience to God please Him, He will remember it. So when you give, don't think that it's not being recorded. It says right here, it, will, it came up to God as a memorial before Him. So He remembered Cornelius' prayers, He remembered Cornelius' arms. So in your giving and the sacrifices that you're making, remember it is being recorded and one day it will be rewarded. So to live and to conquer, we must be in God and we must do all that he says to do. We cannot allow another God to take our place. Shadrach, Meshach, the Abednego, Joseph, David, these are some of them that did not allow a tough situation to stop them from serving God. They did not denounce God. Same thing with Daniel. Daniel had a decision to make too, and he chose to still pray before God the times that he kneeled with his window and door open, and he would pray on behalf of himself and the nation, and he was thrown into the lion's den because of the God he served. And of course, God shut the lions in the mouth. All of the lions in the den, he shut them out. That they couldn't touch Daniel. Why? Daniel pleased God. He did what God said to do. So when we do what God said to do, when we do what Jesus did when he walked on this earth and do what Jesus tells us to do, we should see the same result. God coming and fighting for us. God coming and delivering us. God coming and feeding us. As he did Elijah in a famine. Send him to a widow woman. The widow woman and her son needed to eat. So God ended up feeding three of them one time. Throughout a, heart, throughout a famine. God will do the same. So if you're in a famine and you're in a drought, God will bring you through that. But you have to believe. We all have to believe that there's nothing impossible for God as his word says. Let's turn to Matthew. There is nothing too hard for God to do. But we must make up our minds who is going to be our God. What God are we going to serve? Let's go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Read in verse 24 to 27. Matthew 6, 24 through 20. Actually, let's do 28. Ready, read? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, it's not the life more than means, and the body more than Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Amen. So 24 says, no man can serve two masters. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Joseph, David, 
Peter, Cornelius, the other apostles, they only had one God. They only had one God. When they beat Paul and, 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 and Peter and, and they put them in the prison, they saw Saul, it was but Saul and, and Silas and Peter, different times, but then he, when they beat them and put them in jail and tell them, do not mention the name of Jesus because they were healing, they were doing miracles. They were casting out devils and they were healing the sick and they had a problem with them using the name of Jesus. See, they had already crucified Jesus and they couldn't stand the fact that now Jesus' name was still being um, used. Miracles are still taking place because of Jesus. And they thought by killing them, they're going to get rid of Jesus. In fact, all they did was multiply Jesus. Because when Jesus oneself, it was only one Jesus. When he died and rose again, seated at the right hand of the Father, every one of us who became born again, Jesus, the devil sees us Jesus. Why? Because he's in us. So when they thought they was getting rid of Jesus, they multiplied Jesus in us. They multiplied Jesus in the apostles. And so every time there was a crowd, the Pharisees, Sadducees, they were the, the religious few. They had a problem. They said, man, we thought we get rid of Jesus. We really thought, don't you all say nothing. Don't call this man name. Don't call this man name. They would beat them, put them in jail, let them come out. They go back out there again and they what? Serving God serving Jesus but they had a problem you can't get rid of Jesus you can't get rid of Jesus so we have to make up our mind who are we going to serve we have to be radical and, and, and not fair to the devil you cannot serve you cannot no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other Go, you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon means the God of riches. So it's a God behind riches what God, Jesus, is telling us not to serve. So either we have God or we have the world. We have mammon, riches, or the God of riches. If we're going to serve the God of riches, we can't be serving God at the same time. You can't serve two, not at the same time. You have to put one down and take the other one up. You have to hold one and let one go. So, if you go a child, be God child. And go through it like Jesus did and the apostles did. And men and women today go through. But you have, we all have to make a decision. What God are we going to serve? When hard times come, we hold on to God. In the good times, we just fight. Because when things begin to be good for us and comfortable for us, we don't want to let our guards down. A lot of people let their guards down when life becomes easy. When it becomes more enjoyable, when our needs are start, start, God start to meet our needs and fulfill our needs and our desire, we are either one allowed to overwhelm us, or to overtake our lives, where we don't find the time to pray, where we don't find the time to commune, where we don't find time to fellowship, where we don't find time to praise our God, because we allow now the blessings God give us to make us too busy for Him. Don't allow that to happen. When they promoted Daniel. Into the, in the office of a prime minister, I think it was, he didn't stop doing what he was doing. The people got jealous because of the position that he held. And because he was such an honest man, they wanted to get rid of Daniel so that they could do foolishness. They couldn't get rid of Daniel because he wasn't a crooked man. He was an honest man. He feared God. And so they couldn't find no dirt on Daniel. And so what they decide to do, they said the only way we get him is if we go at his God's laws. If we get him to break one of the laws of his God. Don't break God's laws because the devil will get you. So they came up with that little plan to try to stop Daniel from serving God. At a certain time. For 30 days. They wasn't supposed to worship. No other God other than the God that. Um, the king worshipped. Which was Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel said but not a thing like it. I got the true God. And he opened up his windows. He opened up his door. And he kneeled down before his God. Like he always did. And the ones who, who hatched that plan. Who fixed that plan to try to catch um, Daniel. 
they said, okay, we got you now, Daniel. Well, they thought they, they did. That's how he got thrown in the lion's den. He came out of there, not one scratch on him. And the same wicked men, they were thrown in the same that lion's den that they tried to um, kill Daniel because Daniel was an honest man serving God. And they had a problem with his honesty. And they didn't want him to be in that position that he held. He held a high office and they couldn't stand him. Well, because they dig that hole, that ditch for him, they fell in it. Be careful, don't be digging ditches. Be careful. We have to live right so that we get the blessings. We have to live right so the blessings can come on our children and our children's children. We have to live right so that we can prosper in the earth. Let us believe in God. Let us trust God. Let us have faith in God. Let us trust the word of God. Let us know the word of God. Let us serve our God. And let us serve our God without fear. But let us serve our God with reverence and understanding and love. And when we love him, it's easy to love people. It's easy to love somebody who can't stand you, who hates you for no reason. It's easy to love someone who's trying to get you fired. It's easy to love someone who don't want to give you what rightfully belong to you. But you take your case to God and you present it to God and you watch God vindicate you. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, if we are guilty of serving two masters, if we are guilty, Father God, of wanting to trust in self, trust in things, trust the God of mammon or serve the God of mammon, where we try to feed ourselves, take care of ourselves, protect us ourselves, Father God, to do everything, Father God, to run after the things of this world, which you say that you already know we have need of. You know that we have need for food and for shelter and for clothes. You know that we have need for a place over our head. You know that we have these needs. And God, you say, who? Who can add? Who, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? That's your word. So help us not to take thought of tomorrow. And let us allow you to take care of our tomorrow. Let us allow you to keep a roof over our head, to put food on our, on, on our feet, our children's feet, to keep, Father God, the bills paid, to keep sickness away from us. Let us keep and put our, our trust in you fully today. If we have been wavering, if we have been doubting you that you can do it, and Father God, we repent for doubt. For you say, he who waver will not, or who doubt, will not get anything. So Lord, let us settle it today in our minds that Jesus, we have overcome because Jesus overcame. And we overcome because we are his child. We overcome because we trust you. We, we have peace because we believe in you. And we believe that truly there's nothing, no one greater than you, not even Satan. Satan power came from you. And if you give him power, it means that you are the greater one to serve. And there's nothing greater than you on this earth. And Lord, as we get ready to leave here, Lord, we leave with you. We leave knowing, Father God, that you have us. We leave knowing, Father God, that you will let, 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 let nothing happen to us if we believe. We leave out here with an understanding that it is in you we live, it is in you we move, and it is in you we have our being. We leave out of here knowing, Father God, that we can live a life that is abundant, that we conquer daily, that we move and advance in you daily. So, Father God, give us the discipline to stay in you. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel almost lost their lives. And they feared not losing their lives if it meant losing you. They chose to lose their life and to keep you. They didn't have no fear of losing their life. So, God, let us live that life, Father God, where we serve you and are not afraid to lose our lives. As Jesus laid down his life, God, let us lay down our life for you. Let us lay down our life, Father God, for God, you already said that it's more profitable, more profitable, Father God, to serve you. It truly is more profitable at the end of the day. What we do for Christ is the only thing we'll last. So God, let us get busy doing for you. Let us want to serve you in spirit and in truth and in the very beauty of holiness. And Father God, we say thank you this morning for your love, for your grace for your mercies. Let us allow you to take us and take us through life, prosper in our way, 
prosper in our hands, prosper in our lives, Father God, being a blessing, Father God, being blessed, Father God, and being peaceful, living a life of joy, living a joy of peace, living in love and receiving love and giving love. Let us, Father God, rise up to where we can bless our, I pray to you to bless our enemies, where we can rise up and pray for our enemies that you watch and keep them as you watch and keep us. And Father God, we say thank you, God, and I bind, Father God, all foul spirit is trying to bring fear on us. All evil spirit is trying to cause us to think that we're nothing and that we should be fearful when we should not be fearful. So Lord, we thank you. I sunset, Father God, all seasons. We close and sunset all old seasons, oh God. Fear, anger, bitterness, rejection, delay. We bind and close all those seasons, Father God, that brought them to us as we bind those foul spirits, Father God. And I declare, Father God, that delay, Father God, is finished in our lives. I, de I declare that spirit of rejection is finished in our lives. Who's supposed to see us will see us. Who's supposed to bless us will bless us. Who's supposed to favor us will favor us. So Father God, remove all veils off of us, Father God, all dark veils, Father God. Every evil mark, Father God, have been placed on us. Have us mark, Father God, when no one sees us, when no one blesses God. Let the blood of Jesus Christ erase those marks off of us and tear the veil to pieces. Remove every dark covering off of us, Father God. Remove, Father God, that spirit of heaviness, that spirit of, 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 of Father God wanting, Father God, that spirit, Father God, of the scatter up. Father God, that's your word. That was a curse. A curse was... Father God, we will scatter before our enemies seven ways, but God, we're not scattering anymore. We bind and close that season of the scatterer as we bind that spirit of the scatterer out of our lives, out of our foundation. Father God and Lord, let us be gatherers now, gatherer of good things, Father God, gatherer of blessings and favor, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Once again, Father God, we put that spirit of fear and doubt, Father God, behind us, the sunset. Father God, those seasons where we allow fear to stop us from moving, stop us from believing, doubt, stop us from um, trusting, stop us from believing. We finish with that, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Open up new seasons, Father God, of great possibilities, Father God. Let our minds become creative, Father God. Restore our mind back to its original before any sin, before any destruction, Father God, before any evil, Father God. Wash and Father God, our minds, Father God, wash it, Father God, but give us a new mind, a new brain, Father God. Everything that was taken out of our brain by the enemy, destroyed, Father God, we ask you to replace, Father God, and give us a new brain, Father God, with creative ideas, creative thoughts, Father God, that will, that will advance us and grow us in life, Father God, in the name of Jesus, a creative brain, Father God. A mind, Father God, that understands this world, that we are in it, but we're not of it. An um, open heart, Father God, to receive greater from you, Father God, knowing, Father God, you only have the best for us, for our children, for our grandchildren, Father God. And we take the limits off of our mind. We take the limits, Father God, of what you can do for us. Father God, for you say, ask and it shall be given. So, Father God, we take that limit, Father God, off of our asking you. Because, God, you say we have abundant life in Christ. He came that we may have have life and have it more abundantly till it overflows to the filling. Father God, and I declare this week that our cups are over full, overfill, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I declare, Father God, that the table that you set before us, Father God, we will eat our Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, close all seasons, Father God, where we've been dominated, Father God, and Lord, we will reign, Father God. Open up the Father God, new heavens, Father God, where we have dominion over the works of your hands, where the enemy bow to us because he's bowing to the God in us which is you Father, Son and Holy Spirit if our brain, if our soul is captive this morning God let your hammer destroy every padlock of every cage Father God that have our, our soul in, in bondage and in, in cage Father God, destroy the cage Father God, loose Father God our spirit, our soul Father God in the name of Jesus that we be set free 
I move, I remove all heavy burdens, all yokes off of us, Father God, and I smash them to the ground in the name of Jesus. God, make us light in Christ because Christ don't carry no heavy load. No, we refuse to carry another load today, God. You ain't give us no load, we ain't carrying up. Father God, for you say, cast our cares upon you because you care. Cast the burdens on the Lord, baby. Cast the burdens on you. We take them off of our shoulders today. Father God, and we thank you for great doors of opportunities open for us. Father God, new seasons opening for us. Close the doors, Father God, where we, Father God, was not advancing. Father God, where we were being taken advantage of, Father God, where our gifts and talents, Father God, were being exploited. Close the doors, season. I, set sun, I, I sunset them today in the name of Jesus. I sunset them today in the name of Jesus, saying you will not steal from the body of Christ. You will not steal from no one under the sound of my roof today. It stopped today in the name of Jesus and God. I thank you for restoring back the years that was eaten, that was stolen by the canker worm, the locust, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. I call them back, Father God, in the name of Jesus and the blessings that come with them. In the name of Jesus, let your fire, Father God, clean our homes clean our hearts, clean our lives. Father God, purify our foundations, our forefathers' foundations, Father God, with your fire, Father God, destroying everything that is evil, that is wrong, that is wicked. Father God, all evil spirits, Father God, burn them to ashes. Every evil tree, burn to ashes, Father God. The tree, the leaves, all its fruits, burn to ashes, Father God, in the name of Jesus. All spirit of rebellion, Father God, I bind and cast out of us, Father God, that we will obey your commands, your laws, your precepts, your statutes, Father God, and we will take a great joy, Father God, and living for Christ in this earth. Father God, I thank you for meeting every need, Father God, for you say acts. And God, I thank you and I declare that the bills are paid, the back bills are brought up to date, Father God, that we find favor in your sight, Father God, with you and with man, Father God. And we are a blessing in this earth, Father God, in the name of Jesus. The school fees, Father God, we thank you for meeting them all. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for open doors for all who are getting ready to go to college. Father God, that the, 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 the ways have been set, the path have been cleared in the name of Jesus. All who desire in a home, that the path is clear for the homes that I declare home owners in 2024 under the sound of my voice new locations father god and being located relocated father god where we're supposed to be in life father god in the name of jesus close all old seasons to the wrong locations father god even if we're living in the wrong uh, neighborhood father god move us out of those wrong neighborhoods and put us in neighborhood father god that will speak life Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bind and cast out the spirit of lack and poverty in thy sunset. Father God, lack and poverty, close those seasons, Father God, and open up, Father God, to us, Father God, prosperity, Father God, wealth and riches in our homes, Father God, causing our hands to prosper, our businesses to prosper, Father God, our lives to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God, let your fire, Father God, rain down, Father God. Father God, and everything, every stubborn demon, Father God, that may try to, to still stay, Father God, holding from your children, Father God, I call on the fire of God, Father God, to burn down every hedge, Father God, to destroy, Father God, all doors, Father God, all gates, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they burn the ashes, Father God, and God, we thank you, God, that all good things are open up to us, new season of your treasures, Father God, opening up to us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for you hold no good thing from us, and I declare the good things of the Lord is open to us. Father God, as we receive, Father God, keys to our new homes, keys to new vehicles that are all in need of new vehicles, Father God, and we will not, Father God, say no to your blessings, and Father God, we thank you, Father God, also God, making the cricket path straight and the wrong right, continuing our lives, Father God, go before us, Father God, and make our path clear. Father God, delivering us from all evil, Father God, for the time, Father God, is short. And that, Father God, we will be reminded, Father God, that only what we do for you will last, that we will truly pick up our cross and follow you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we will not get discouraged in this season. This is a new season, Father God, of blessings, Father God, of great things coming to pass. But God, we will not allow the blessings from your hand, Father God, to cause us not to see who we came from or to pull us out of you. But Father God, we will make it a blessing, keep it a blessing, Father God, and not a curse. And Father God, we say thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.